All right, let's talk about the Nothing Ear One. These are a set of wireless earbuds that seem heavily hyped right now on the market. Like there was a drop of them on StockX. There's YouTubers talking about it. It's on publications, it's in the news. It's like the definition of a hyped product. Now, the company behind it, Nothing, was started by Carl Pei. He's the guy that helped co-found OnePlus. It's also a company that's backed by Casey Neistat. It's also co-developed by Teenage Engineering. They make some of the best synths in the entire, like, genre of portable synths. And the hardware is special. They do, in my opinion, something that other hardware synths don't do. It's just, it's special. So when I heard that they were involved in Ear One, I was like, I'm, I'm curious. My interest is piqued. However, there's a part of me that's concerned that this is just a standard pair of earphones being hyped up by social media, right? Because it, it can kind of look like that. Good marketing can lead to this kind of stuff. So I kind of, I went in on it. I thought I, I needed to learn more. So the first thing I wanted to know was why? Why would Carl go from smartphones to wireless earbuds? So I dug around and I found this nugget of information. Apple sells a lot of AirPods. It was estimated in 2020 that they sold somewhere between 10 to maybe $20 billion worth of AirPods. Like if you look at those numbers and you compare them to the companies around there, that's a lot. And keep in mind, this is just AirPods, an accessory, right? That lineup of accessories generates a lot of money for Apple, even with those conservative estimates. So Apple clearly knew what they were doing when they removed the headphone jack in 2016. But enter 2021, Carl Pei enters this seemingly saturated industry of wireless earphones with Ear One. They're in here, I just, I can't unbox it. I'm shooting this before the embargo, okay? Um, so the question is like, why, right? Why enter that market? Well, for one, if you do it right, you could disrupt that market. There's a lot of money in that pie, okay? And Carl, he likes to disrupt and he's actually pretty good at it. So I think Carl did two things with Ear One to differentiate his product from everything else. Number one, price. So these come in at $99. There's not the cheapest thing out there. There's definitely cheaper wireless earbuds out there, but we'll talk about it in a second. If you look at the feature set, it's actually very well priced. Secondly though, aesthetics. Ear ones look different. They're made with a clear, transparent plastic, so you can see the innards. And when you look in there, everything that you're seeing seemingly has a functional reason for it to be there. Like all the components, all the materials, they all have a purpose. They're not just sticking stuff in there for it to look a certain way. Now, in one sense, you could argue that they kind of look like AirPods like in terms of the shape, but in terms of the color, just because of the transparency, they look they look completely different. Like if you think about you walking on the street or you're just, you know, you're watching the Olympics and you're seeing people with those white stemmed earbuds, like they just look like AirPods because that's the original wireless AirPod from Apple and anything that's white, like the half of these things are white here, they just look like AirPods. This thing you see being worn, it it's clearly not an AirPod. It's clearly, if you know anything about this company, it's clearly the Ear One. And then the carrying case is also transparent. It has USB-C charging, it has wireless charging capabilities, but the big feature is, again, is aesthetic. Now, notice that I did not talk about audio quality because realistically, the sound is almost irrelevant to the conversation of how these things will sell. Assuming they don't sound like complete trash. There's no way they do, right? Not with Teenage Engineering behind it and not with Carl behind it. There's no way that they're putting out a product that sounds terrible but the sound quality is actually not that important in terms of the marketing because the differentiating features between any of these things is how they look and the price. That stuff is way more important to the average consumer than the nuances of like the actual sound profile. But I'm gonna assume that they sound good. We'll find out in a day or two. So this is the spec list and there's a bunch of cool stuff in here, but the one feature that jumps out to me is the weight. These come in at 4.7 grams per earbud, and that's pretty light in this product category, but I bring it up for a couple of reasons. Number one is comfort, right? The lighter an earbud is when it comes to a wireless earbud like this, the more comfortable it's gonna be for an extended period of time if you're wearing it for a long time. But the other thing is battery life. So it's this juggling act, this balancing act of how heavy do you make the device and also how much battery do you pack in the thing, right? And I think 4.7 grams with a decent battery life while it's running active noise cancellation, 
I like that. I think a lot of companies go the opposite direction where they go for something heavier, but the battery lasts a lot longer. But personally, and this is just a personal preference, I like my stuff lighter, but with uh, shorter battery life as a consequence. And the last thing I want to touch on is that price. So the price of this product at $99, that's why this whole thing even matters to me personally. Because if it was $150 or $200, then no one would care, right? Because then you can get similar stuff to this, and then the only differentiating factor is the aesthetic, right? But because it's 100 bucks, you're looking at a product that is priced noticeably cheaper than almost all of the big name competitors out there. Now, people are gonna draw comparisons to this and be like, well, you can get product X or product Y for hundred bucks, but they don't have a feature set like this. So the pricing is kind of special. Now in terms of the marketing, it feels a little thick. I personally don't like heavily marketed stuff. Like I just, you know, I'm really averse to heavily marketed things and I can kind of smell and taste. Uh, it, it's got that hot sauce, that marketing hot sauce that companies like to do, but in their defense, because it's a new brand, new product, I feel like it's it's necessary. In this day and age, if you don't do this kind of stuff, especially when you have a good price point and you potentially have a good product, I feel like I feel like I'll give it a I'll give it a pass in terms of its marketing. But I do still have a couple concerns with this product. Number one, because it's a clear, transparent plastic, it's gonna scratch. There's no way that you can keep it looking pristine and as clean as the photos like even a week after use. It's gonna be scratchy, just assume that it's gonna get scuffed and that's just how the product will look. But the other thing, and this is kind of a more personal thing, this is a product that, it can't just be like the only product that nothing makes, right? They can't just be in the business of making earphones and that's it. Just make one product and they're out, no way. They're doing this for the long haul, right? Whatever they come up with in the future, I'm interested to see what they do, but what I don't want to see is like, nothing year five, you know, 2025, and it's $500 and it's like, you know, the pro model and it's done in partnership with Dolby Audio. That would suck. Cause that's not what, that's so not what I want. But at $99, first product, good feature set. I want to crack this thing open. Thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.